In part one, we address the importance of defining your management objectives, working to obtain a stand evaluation and securing approval for any proposed forest treatments through a compatible use authorization. In this segment, we'll dig deeper into the process of initiating forest management planning and implementing approved forest treatments on your easement. Any proposed forest treatment methods on your easement must properly address wildlife habitat and easement objectives. As we shared in Part 1, to ensure proper stand assessment and planning criteria are used, it is essential to coordinate with NRCS early in this process if you're working with a non-NRCS forester or wildlife biologist. Your forest management plan does not have to be complex, but it should identify specific objectives as well as proposed methods to achieve them. Forest treatment objectives generally include one or more of the following. Reduce number of trees in overcrowded stands to improve growth. Promote a well-developed understory by increasing vegetation and cover in the forest floor. Promote tree species diversity and develop patches of early successional habitat. Meeting these objectives requires the selective removal of trees, which may be accomplished through one or more harvest methods, such as general crown thinning, group removals, or patch cuts. So here, here we're standing in a water oak plantation. It was thinned about four years ago. This is what we call row thinning, where every fourth row is an access row, the whole row is removed, so that's 25% of your tree. And row two and three, half of those trees were removed, make them another 25%. Therefore, combined, that's 50% of the trees were removed. However, this is just one technique. It's the easiest technique. So another option to thin these hardwood plantations is you use cluster retention method. We're still gonna remove about half the stems, but we're gonna do it in a way that we leave these small clusters of trees retained. The clusters will vary in size and will vary in number of trees. This lends itself to more diverse amount of light coming through the canopy which, which then in, results in a more diverse plant community in the other story. How a forest treatment is planned and ultimately implemented will not only influence current habitat conditions, but also affect future forest stand management and habitat development opportunities. This is why it is so important to work with a qualified specialist to formulate an effective plan. Your local NRCS office can assist in identifying qualified natural resources professionals in your area to help you get started. In addition to the landowner guide we discussed in Part 1, NRCS and partners have also developed an advanced WRE forest plantation assessment tool that is designed to assist natural resource specialists in evaluating current stand conditions and developing the best forest treatment plan for your easement. You should also review this assessment tool and discuss it with your resource professional. You can view and download the tool at the address on the screen, or you can request a copy from your local NRCS office. Once your resource professional has completed a forest stand assessment and developed a written plan, then it's time to submit it to your local NRCS office for review and subsequent development of a compatible use authorization. Remember, a CUA must be approved by NRCS and issued to a WRE landowner before any action can be taken on the ground. The advice that I would give to an easement owner that is interested in actively managing their easement plan is to first contact that local NRCS field office to meet with that lead planner to kind of review your easement plan. Um, from there, they can ensure that you do still have your proper documentation, such as your compatible use authorization forms in place that are approved for you to be able to complete those management activities um, and also put you in connection with different partners, federal and state partners, that can assist with you on the form uh, with your uh, continuing of your management activities. After your CUA is developed and approved, your next step is to begin implementing your plan. Work with NRCS staff to assist you in understanding and implementing the treatment plan. Your resource professional can help identify potential local markets for conducting harvests. But be aware that limited forest product markets can make commercial timber sales a potential challenge in some areas. In these cases, pre-commercial treatments may be an option. However, implementing these treatments can be challenging and are sometimes cost prohibitive. Landowners should take into consideration their available economic resources 
and the value of improving wildlife habitat and stand conditions on their easement. Felled trees that are not removed for commercial harvest can also provide habitat for diverse wildlife species. As a general rule, it is the responsibility of the landowner to incur the cost of implementing an approved forest treatment. And remember, these treatments must conform to the approved CUA. Now, let's discuss another important consideration to forest treatments, non-native invasive vegetation. There are a number of noxious invasive plants within bottomland hardwood forests throughout the Mississippi Alluvial Valley. As the name implies, they can spread rapidly and have dramatic long-term negative effects on your stand by displacing and outcompeting more desirable native plants. So anytime we thin a stand and we introduce light to the stand, we run the risk of, uh, of introducing invasive species such as this Chinese tallow tree. One this large, to control it, you would need to use a hack and squirt process where you actually hack into the bark and uh, apply chemical. If it's a smaller tree, it can be foliar applied. Active forest management activities, particularly mechanized treatments, can create the ideal environment for these undesirable plants to proliferate. Therefore, stands should always be surveyed for invasive plants in advance of any forest treatment and, if found, should be addressed prior to commencing further management activities. Some common invasive plants found in the Mississippi Alluvial Valley include Chinese tallow tree, trifoliate orange, Chinese privet. Alert your natural resource professional to the presence of any invasive plants you have identified they should always identify and document invasive plants as part of their stand evaluation and incorporate that information in the treatment plan. Never underestimate the potential long-term problems invasive plants can cause while implementing short-term enhancements. Due diligence during any forest management activity is essential to maintain desired long-term habitat quality. While habitat enhancement is an important part of meeting WRE program objectives, Forest management activities should be well thought out, carefully planned, and properly executed. For more information or assistance with wetland reserve easements, or to obtain compatible use authorizations, contact your local USDA Service Center. Wetland reserve management videos were developed by NRCS and the Tri-State Conservation Partnership.